come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie review podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination. You can help us out with that by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button. All of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you. And we like you. I like you. Mm-hmm. There you Sean? go. You're pretty cool. Okay. I mean, cool. I like you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, can, <laughs> I think we're on the verge of a Michaela Sean swap. Yeah. As Wait, far as pers- do we Freaky Friday? I think, did society do it? I think it did because <laughs> now you're going to pick the ones that are just like, fuck you. And I'm going to and I, and I pick nice ones for the rest of the year. So. <laughs> well, who society are? Society just and broke so you me. Made, you made the joke. You're just like, meh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like we're gonna we're gonna find out what she's punishing with <laughs> us with next week uh, at the end of this episode. Yeah. But who are these internet radio superstars? Michaela, Sean, Holly, and I'm Colin. And we want to remind you that right now uh, we're going we're doing our listener request month in January. So that means head on over to our social medias and you can uh, submit some uh, suggestions for movies that we will watch and uh, talk about in January. So you can find us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Giant Freak Show. On Twitter? At Sat Freak Show. On Instagram? Oh, sorry. Uh, you can email us directly. <laughs> Internet Freak Show, Yahoo.com. I was like, I don't do Instagram, Colin. That's right. We should make you Instagram. Who uses email anymore? Some of you do, actually. So uh, yeah, uh, yeah, keep on uh, keep on emailing us and Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, next week, we're going to enter the voting round, and you can uh, vote from the uh, submitted submissions. Um, tonight, though... We watched a movie that was chosen by Holly. Holly, what we watched tonight? Tonight we watched Terror Train Ooh. from the year <laughs> 1980. 80. Okay, directed by Roger Spottiswood. Spottiswood. We've had Spottiswood that- on here before, haven't we? We've talked Spottiswood. Oh, he's got some gems, guys. Oh, <laughs> that's weird. I thought he did Species, but he didn't. He didn't, but he did, <laughs> he did do classics such as. Turner and Hooch. Ooh, no. that's and right. I watched that in like not too long Michaela, ago. Michaela, stop her. My mom will shoot. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> keep keep saying it and I'll bring it. Maybe that's what I'm bringing next week to punish Sean with. Stop her. My mom will shoot. He also did Air America. Is it still getting it? Yes, it does. <laughs> he wrote 48 Hours. Oh, no. All right. Okay. Well, yeah. did he co write it? He did. I thought that was a wealthy. Okay. Yeah. But he was also like an editor for Sam Peckinpah for like mm-hmm. a number of years, too. There's going to nice. be a tie in with uh, Sam Peckinpah also. Uh, okay. So, it's Terror. Train. Now, Train. I guess the question is, uh, was this a first time viewing for anybody here tonight? Uh, it was my first time remembering. Yeah. Well, when uh, <laughs> Joe, uh, Joe Bob had this on, what, the Halloween episode? I think so. I think so. Um, I watched That's bad program. Why not do it for the Christmas episode, I dude? Uh, well, because of the Curtis. guests. Yeah. Um, and I think I saw about two thirds of it that night, and I didn't see, I didn't know what the ending was going to oh, be. Okay. Did I see All the right. ending? I don't know. It's very foggy. This was my first full watch. Okay. This is my first time watching yeah. it. It's been on my freak show like to do list for a long time though. Well, yeah. I was just curious because I mean I figure like this is on like the horror movie syllabus at some point. Yeah. Oh, mostly because of the inclusion of Jamie Lee Curtis in the cast, right? Yes. Right. I mean, we're gonna say that I don't know. I, I mean, you hear the term scream queen thrown around a lot. There's mm-hmm. so and so's a scream queen. I'm like, there is really only one scream queen. She was the original. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so some people say, but Faye Ray, she had a scream and she was in movies, but that doesn't qualify That's not you. That's what we're talking yeah. about. No. Scream queen. What is a scream queen? Like you're mostly known for being the final girl in horror movies. Like yeah. that's like what your career is kind of built around mm-hmm. and yeah. you're good at it. Yeah. I think and being we, yeah, good we, at it's we important. like you as yeah. It. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's the way I, I figure, you know, if Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, okay. So at this point in time, anyway, she had right? A streak. When, yeah. If you bought a ticket to a Jamie Lee Curtis movie, you knew it was going to be a horror movie. Yes. Right. right. She's a scream queen. Because um, she was in, I mean, obviously from Halloween, right? Like mm-hmm. made her uh, career. Mm-hmm. Um, and so after that, then she was in a bunch of low budget horror movies. I think that basically was capped by Halloween 2 in mm-hmm. 1981. So between yeah. 1978 and 1981, she was in movies such as Prom Night. The Prom Night was filmed uh, two months before this. Right. Wow. Because this yeah. was part of the same 
like Canadian tax shelter. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, love it. Love it. Yes, Canadian it tax shelter. She, she was up in Canada. And they're like, why don't you come over and do this one? Yeah. Oh, do you think that guy that let the sorry slip blew the cover? Yeah. Like they were like, dude, uh, somebody's you're blowing. Like, Wait a second. Yes, exactly. Canadian. Yes. <laughs> so I don't the know. Fog. When you, when you, the fog, right? Mm-hmm. And yep. uh, the, the, Road games. Road, road, road games, games, I think, was Crazy also. Keech. And that was an Australian uh, movie. Yes, but yeah, I mean, basically, that was the collection. And then after that, uh, I think it was John Landis basically uh, took Jamie Lee Curtis out of low budget horror, put her in trading places. And mm-hmm. from there, she had like a very different career trajectory right. in the mainstream Hollywood movies right. for the, there, and the career. For the very shortened version of what we just said, go watch Scream. <laughs> Like yeah. it's all right there. That's yeah. true. Yeah. All we just said is just right there. <laughs> How do I get the box set of this this part of her career? Right? right? Where's right? the box yeah. set of this like five year span where I can get all these movies it's together? Just, it's so funny though because she had said before that after the success of Halloween, the only jobs she could get were tiny roles on like Love Boat and Charlie's Angels. Like she couldn't get a job for quite a while. Yeah, because like, that's that's that fucking Hollywood elitism yeah. that horror movies are trash and to be looked down upon and it's like mm-hmm. lowbrow art, you know? It's yeah. like fucking hate it like after after this run of five or she's saying like she couldn't get a legit uh you know because i mean again it depends on how an actor perceives you know she's stuck in a rut of just doing low budget horror movies can't break mm-hmm. through in the mainstream hollywood i mean is that you know so she can get jobs on the love boat or whatever but yeah, can't like, get it like, like a real she was movie. like yeah people are talking about me from halloween but i can't get a job Mm. But it seemed like she was working every year. Halloween was 78. This was made in 79 and came out in 80. And you said two months prior she did prom night. I think, though, she sees those as being lateral moves and she Mm -hmm. wants to move up, you know, move forward, move upwards, you know. Yeah. And And then for a while she was like, she hated the idea that she was a scream queen and then eventually, like, embraced it. Now she owns it. it. Yeah. Now she's like. This is Everyone what I'm known does. for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everyone's got that change. They're just Wait. like, oh, do something different. I don't want to be known as this. That's no. right. They want to be in movies like Perfect or Love uh, Letters. I watched Perfect. Okay. Did you? Did you? <laughs> I did for work. <laughs> I'm not going to say I didn't Perfect enjoy it. Perfect is all, isn't it? It's been my freak show to do this for a long that time. That is, uh, yep. It's a movie. It's a movie. It's a movie. It's, a movie. it's something else. John Travolta. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. A lot of thrusting in that movie. Yes. <laughs> a lot of thrusting. Yeah. I, why is there a movie about a guy who writes obituaries writing an article for Rolling Stone about health clubs in the 80s? That's the premise of that movie. <laughs> who the fuck wants to watch that as, movie? As a, dating, as a dating area. Yeah. Like from the, the yeah. studying the social Health clubs. Impact. I mean, because that was a... the rise of the health club. Yeah. We got yeah. movies like Killer Workout and Death Spa. I don't see the problem with this. <laughs> they got movies like Perfect. <laughs> yep. Um, but who's who's our scream queen now? Or when was the last time we had one? Even if we don't, because we don't really. I feel. I feel like we don't have one now. Well, now mm. we still have scream queens, but I don't. It doesn't feel like the. Uh, I mean, because what you would say, like a, a Sarah Michelle Geller, maybe, or somebody who you know, it's like okay, then you graduate. I from, mean, Nev Campbell. Or, has she done I don't, stuff but other I feel than like, Scream? Yeah, though? I was like, I feel like doing one movie and then graduating does not make you a scream queen. You know what I'm I saying? Mean, but like, Nev mm-hmm. Campbell is. Literally, a scream but, queen. Like but, uh, she may but, have been doing five scream movies, but but that's that's one franchise though. Like yeah, it that has to be count like to me. what else? Yeah. Aside from Party movie, Five, but well, like true. Sarah Michelle mm-hmm. Geller would be in horror movies. I mean, I know she right. was in well, Cruel Intentions and, and other stuff. Yeah. What was the one where she was a witch or there was magic? Simply in irresistible. Yeah, yeah. Was, she had the magic crab, the yeah, tartar yeah. cook. It was like <laughs> it was like a horrible. Okay, I didn't watch the movie. I didn't know that. It happened. was like a. It's like that movie, like Water for Chocolate, but watered down, like to the dumbest degree of like her emotions go into the food she makes, and a crab <laughs> teaches her how to do it. That's that movie. I'm watching this movie. Yeah. I'm just. I'm just saying. They say, like, and just for the people out there who know who Brink Stevens is or Linnea Quigley, you know, it's like uh, we're we're saying we we recognize that they're out there, right? But they're not mainstream though, and like, I don't think they're the draw. No, you know, of the movie. That's no. that's the scream queen. Is you're going because she's in it. Well, because nowadays, if you make a good horror movie and you're a good actor, then you do like a Marvel movie. Same yeah. as like a director. It's this. They, everyone's on the same trajectory. Like it's just a launching pad to get you the next thing. So yeah. no one stays in the genre anymore. Right. Because I was looking over because I, I Googled modern scream queens and it is all people who have been like at most two horror movies. Yeah. Maybe. Or they right. graduate them from for. like The Walking Dead to a, a movie or right. Game of Thrones to mm-hmm. a movie. And the first right. movie is like a horror movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. So we've set the stage. Jamie Lee Curtis is in this movie. She is. Um, 
She looks like 10 years older than she looked in Halloween. I cannot, I could not believe this was 1980. I was like, this has got to be like 87. Hair, I guess? She, it it's must be the hair. hair. <laughs> the hair and the yeah. makeup, I guess. Yeah. Like, yeah, she looks like she's like 30 in this movie compared to Halloween. Yeah. Look closer to the fog. She looked older than that, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the hair. Then right she had hair. to wear the wig for the wig she did. for Halloween. That too. wig is um, yeah. un, and that wig is unmovable mm-hmm. in that movie. You know, so I did look this movie up on Wikipedia. Wikipedia yes, we says did. the school that they're from. I know. I I saw the sweatshirt the and I was it like, is, did I read that correctly? It is Michaela's alma mater. Is my alma mater? Northern, yeah. Northern Illinois University. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a guy in the beginning wearing a sweater, but he has a jacket over it, so you can only see like part of the. And I was like, does that say? And I you and I was like, it looks it's the it's yeah. the colors and everything too. So I was like, no, I was like, no, it's not. Oh yes. And I kept waiting for them to, the, to mention it. And so I like looked it up on my phone when we watched. I was like, oh shit, it was NIU. <laughs> Although not filmed in Illinois, it was supposed to be NIU. It yeah. does look like an Illinois winter though. They got that I mean, right. Yeah. 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 Our winters don't look much different Baron, from Canada. Well, right. Well, that's very true. Yeah. Cold and gray and yeah, snow. That's about it. And this is also, uh, as we have a holiday approaching, this is a New Year's Eve movie. It is a New Year's Eve movie. But it also could play as a Halloween movie. It could, because they have a costume party. So, Listeners, have you ever been to a costume party on New Year's Eve? We had a lot of discussion off mic about this. We have not, apparently. Yeah. Never been to one. And I, I feel like, I have not looked into this, but I truly feel like this was more common in a certain period of time. You know, I think so. I the think, 20s. Oh, I sorry. think it was more masquerade yeah. for New Year's. Yeah. They just went full on costume. Yeah. Because yeah. you'd have like the mask on a stick and everything or have, you know, well, like, like Bruce Wayne would go to it. Yeah, like, like a Marty Gras. Like yeah, I yeah, said, yeah. In, the, in the movie Mermaids with Cher, Winona Ryder, Christina Ricci, love that movie. Right, the one that, that right, gotcha. love it. Uh, that is a full on costume party because we all remember Cher's dress as a mermaid. Yeah, full on costume party. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yep. I've seen this before. We Was all this? Remember that. God, yes. I love that movie. Yes, is this like do. a thing that used to happen and it just doesn't anymore? Right. You got to bring well, it back, parents. Ask your, ask your parents. We're doing it in my <laughs> house. Like we don't talk about New Year's things. Eve costume party. Come as your favorite costume okay i feel like now people just dress nice for new year's which i'm like that's lame yeah. i'm not yeah. doing that yeah. but <laughs> everyone wants to do gatsby yeah new year's. i think you're supposed to be like to dress in a certain way where nobody knows who you are right I but why point. i don't know what does that have to do what does any of this have to do with new year's tomorrow you're yeah because it's, of, it's a new yeah. you new year new you Maybe take the masks off at New Year's. I, okay, we're, like we we may be completely I mean, like yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like no, I do no, not know the traditions of you New know? Year's. No, <laughs> like, I don't know. I'd like to. At midnight, you take the mask. But off. like this know. movie, it's just to like set up red herrings. That's yeah, the yes. it's, yeah like, get people correct. in costumes so a killer can walk around. Mm-hmm. Free. Correct. Because we've established that in a slasher movie, and this is from the golden age. This is actually then an early slasher movie because this would have come out the same year as uh, as Friday the Thirteenth. Mm-hmm. Um, that your killer has to wear a mask, right? Yep. Because that's what makes it. So this is kind of like this movie is kind of the the thing that the '90s uh, faux slasher movies took from it, right? Is that there is a killer? It's like an Agatha Christie thing, I guess. Yeah. That you're you know you're going with. It's like you got a confined setting. There's a killer. Mm-hmm. The killer is one of the cast. Mm-hmm. Which one of the cast is it? Is right. going to be the it's, question. These are fun. Yeah. Yeah, they're, so they're mysteries. Yeah, they're whodunits. They're like there's very. Oriental I don't Express. know that it was Express. ever a mystery to the audience though. Like when you have into such a like memorable, inciting incident, is it really a mystery who the killer is? You know what I'm saying? Like you had you you've given us a setup where we have someone who has a clear reason for vengeance. So, oh, is it a mystery? You, I you know, mean, when you're taken down by sexy netting. Yeah, yeah. The, but it's reve- the revenge of the sexy right. heading, yeah. In this case, is, it's not that we don't know who it is. It's we we haven't seen him, or we don't think we've seen him. Yeah. Like, where right. we, where is he hiding? Where did he come from? Kind of. To right. me, this movie like had a lot of parallels with Slaughter High for me. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I did feel that Kenny was very close to... Oh, I forgot his name. In the Mar- was it Marty? Martin? Marty. Marty? Yes, yeah. I think you're right. Uh, because this is like one of the most popular, I think, aside from the escape mental patient, right? Mm-hmm. There's also the revenge. Like yes. Something went I mean, this is the plot of the Valentine. Prom, prom night. Valentine. The prom. Valentine. <laughs> oh, yeah. The yeah. prank that goes wrong or something mm-hmm. that goes wrong. And then three years later. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it makes revenge. sense to me. The revenge plot always makes sense to okay, me. Okay. Tell me what the setup is for this movie. What are we, what do we got going on here? What okay. So, for? um, yeah. I mean, she this, says, uh, this is brutal. Oh this it's inciting so, incident. It's which so brutal. After we go over it, we should talk about wh- wh- what do you think's more traumatizing, Slaughter High or this inciting okay. incident? Because they're both mm. pretty fucking bad. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, so we've got, obviously we said this is at NIU, it's a college campus, uh, and it takes place in a fraternity at the beginning of the movie, um, and it's clearly, they're hazing, which I feel like the hazing portion of the year should be over. Yeah, it's, right? you're on winter break, what yeah, are you nerds still break. doing at school? No, no one hangs that's, out of school winter exactly break. Because they're like, damn it, in Illinois, it's just fucking cold all the time. No, <laughs> it's cold. It's winter Dude, in the summertime. No. The thing is, like when you're in college and you go on winter break, you get like a, a month off. Yeah, it's a I long say, time. Me, I work at a college. Yeah. As soon as finals are over, those kids are out, out of there. <laughs> out. They are yeah. gone. Yeah. Because I got a month off. I'm Nobody's not hanging around hanging here. Out. Yeah. No, it doesn't but They got happen. a party. They're college kids. <laughs> no, you got they're, go not, home and they're going home and partying. They party got, yeah. they got a party friends. and they got a prank. That's. Yeah. That's the life of a college. Yeah, so they're Torture having like a New Year's party at this fraternity, and part of their hazing is they are going to pull a massively cruel prank on this this kid who's mm-hmm. rushing the fraternity. Kenny Hampson, great name. <laughs> there we go. We get to we meet Kenny. It's uh, it's interesting how the movie like uh, shoots Kenny at the beginning of the movie because you see him, but he doesn't make that much of an impression. Yeah. Or maybe this right, is my right. take on it. Even it's in like, the even in the yearbook, when they point to him, they're like, "Oh, that's just Kenny Hampson. He's turned towards right. other people. He's yeah. in the back of his head." Yeah. Right. Which I suppose should be something that you should pay attention to. Obviously, we're telling you now. This is the first time that mm-hmm. uh, you know there are recognizable faces in the movie, but Kenny is not. Mm. Right. Okay. So. You know, usually if you go with like murder, the murder she wrote route. Okay, this is I'm dating myself, but the the, the guest star of the week. This is the template for like every yes. every show. Yeah. Oh yeah, the yeah. guest star of the week is usually the person who did it. Yeah, yeah. usually. <laughs> yeah, this is going the opposite way where it's like uh, we're gonna cast a nobody. Yeah, this is like special this. guest star Sean Bean. Well, he's gonna die. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, so what happens to Kenny? What What's the prank that uh, is pulled? So uh, they've pulled in Jamie Lee Curtis to assist with this prank. And I think she has some idea of what's happening, but she doesn't know the extent of how cruel it's about to be. Um, so they're basically trying to talk this kid up and trying to get him to go over. And they're basically trying to get him to go upstairs and hook up with Jamie Lee Curtis. That's that's the whole thing. Part of their hazing is they have to like hook up with a girl by yeah, the end of the lose night. Lose your virginity. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Delio, yeah. So Jamie Lee goes upstairs, she sets the stage, she has like nothing but a a football jersey on, and he sees her go in the room. So he follows her in the room, Jamie Lee is staged behind the bed, where she's calling out to him to join her, and... The bed is adorned with sexy netting. Yes. Sexy the bed netting. Is Lots of sexy netting. netting. That is key, Colin. So it's important. Can, it is, so that you cannot see who is in the bed. Yeah. Yeah, you can't see who's in the bed. Um, Jamie Lee is behind This is the what bed. I use it for. Same reason. Yeah. <laughs> Don't want to see anything before you get in there. Right. <laughs> the <surprise>. mystery. <laughs> yeah. That's a, the mystery, yeah. Uh, so as he as he gets in the bed, she's, she's saying, you know, kiss me, Kenny. And he goes to kiss her and finds that instead of Jamie Lee, it is a fucking corpse. In the bed. Yeah. Okay. So this makes sense. An only autopsied because- cadaver. Yeah. yeah it's say. it's fucking corpse. gross. It's so With gross. With missing body parts. Mm-hmm. But we find out uh, that these are like pre-med students or something. Yes. And that's mm-hmm. why they've had access Doc is to pre-med, this. yeah. So Who's Doc? Doc is Hart Bachner. He is the one of the antagonists of the movie. Um, he is the head of the fraternity, I would say. And he I is think he also a jokester. An inductee into the Saturday Night Free oh, Show. Oh, shit. Thing. Oh, okay. yeah. Hart Bachner. Okay, so according to MF Med, the keeper of the Saturday Night Free Ooh, Show. Hold on, I'm trying to think of the third Here one. Here we go. Well, what do you got for the first one? Well, I got Urban Legends. Urban Legends Final Cut, correct. Oh, got this one. Okay, he was in one other movie that we have covered on this show. Die Hard. I have no idea. They have not done Die Hard. He is in Die Hard, but that's probably what you... He's Ellis in Die Hard, right? You'll remember mm-hmm. him. Uh, he was a voice in uh, Batman, The Mask of the Phantasm. Oh, so that's going way go. back. Oh, wow. That's going way back. Yeah. Uh, thank you. That. Thank you, Emma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So Hart Bachner is, is Doc. Uh, I didn't recognize, there was another guy I recognized, but I'm sorry. I don't remember his name in the cast, but basically there's like four or five people that pull this prank. Okay. So there's a corpse in the bed and then Kenny freaks out. So what, yeah. what does Kenny do? He starts spinning <laughs> spinning he stands up and spins on the bed and gets caught like a yeah. fucking cartoon character gets caught up in the sexy yeah. netting like he loses his shit he which i, mean, I don't blame he him right. yeah. he, he has like a mental breakdown but yeah. like, he does. but yeah. like it's the it's that cartoon character mentality of like i'm getting caught up in this thing so continuing to spin will make it better like yeah. no dude stop fucking moving just stop moving for a second it really and is. you're fine it's like a cartoon where yeah. like someone like 
has like a bee on them or something and yep. they just start flailing into everything and get tailed up. It's exactly yeah. like that. Yeah, it's a bit comical. This yeah. movie has some cartoony yes. elements. Really we'll get does. to it at the end. Because, really and too. I know that Prom Night had already done it, but it seemed like this. I'm like, okay, so uh, in, in, in the slasher uh, movie uh, inciting incident, uh, you know, like extre- the scale, right? Uh-huh. I know it's gross, but it didn't seem that like, uh, you know, like inciting, I guess, for, you know, didn't like, seem like off it would be the, traumatic because, enough. Yeah, because I think it was I like, think it's pretty fucked you know, up. I get that it's fucked up, but that would make you uh, become a homicidal serial killer. I don't know. People I mean, snap over less all the time, Colin. That's true. I do. Well, if you, put a, if you see, you create the prank and then something goes horribly wrong. Like the guy accidentally falls. He gets okay. wrapped up in the well, sex and flies out says, the window. She says, she says well, later yes. on. And it was like, oh, we killed him. This is, I know what you did last time. She summer. basically like, says later on, like, oh, he was already crazy because he may have killed somebody. Yeah. Okay. He was already sick. Yeah. Which, so why are you fucking with the guy that may have already they killed somebody? They didn't why? know that. Oh. They so didn't know she, that. Went well, to, she went to see him in the hospital or she yeah, heard she about, well, she he, went to yeah. see him and they wouldn't let her see him. Yeah. And but she went and she got some info on him. Uh, apparently they told her that. Why would they Right, yeah, they yeah. just let that yeah. information go. It's yeah. 1980. Are you related? No, it doesn't matter. So here's his history. I mean, she <laughs> has this on his sister. <laughs> By the way, what scene are you for That's again? true. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we find that out in like the third act. That, yeah, like, that's yeah. much yeah. later, yeah. And so he was already disturbed, and this was the moment that put him over the edge. Yeah. But so, so, Colin, do you think this is better or worse than uh, Slaughter High? I need some refresher. Slaughter High, that kid got swirly naked, like waterboarded in the bathroom. That we saw it. his dick yeah, flying around shower, everywhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was, okay. it and went that, on for well, a long time. Was he going to hook up went, with Caroline Monroe? Yes, was he was. Yeah. Part, yeah. Yeah. But then he also went into a lab and blew up. Yeah. Like, we forget that part. <laughs> that's right. That's better. <laughs> that's, that's the key part. Right yeah, I did yeah. forget about that. Right. Yeah. I was so traumatized by like the naked swirly that I yeah, forgot the second that. part, so I'm going to say that one's worse. Yes, that, that's you. worse. So there you go. Because yeah. then you're like, I'm going to kill me. those okay. motherfuckers. Like, oh, yeah. this yeah. I was like, all I remember is that at one point he was naked and we saw lots of Lots right. of it. I don't remember what happened. Then he blew up. Yeah, He blew up. That was it. That's what I'm saying. You got to embarrass them and then it goes bad and it ends up like, oh shit, we're culpable for this. So the uh, people who did this prank never seemed to really suffer. Apparently, there's tales that, you know, they had shut down the hazing or whatever. You mean frat boys weren't punished? They weren't yeah. punished. And they continued what? to be horrible? Imagine that. What? Yeah. Yep. So, <laughs> so what you're saying later. is we're on his side? <laughs> I am. I am. <laughs> Honestly, like, yeah, I didn't feel bad for any of these no, folks. Because Hart Bachner as the lead, like, he is a fucking psychopath, yes. right? Yes, I mean, that's is. what we're going with. Yes. And he's, like, I, I kind of love this because, like, later on it reveals that he paid for this whole train party thing. It's like, okay, so he's a rich white boy fraternity boy. Makes sense. It makes a lot of fucking sense. I think sense. he used the... the uh, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's boyfriend was the one with the money, but it was Hart Bachner's idea. Yes. And that's why Jamie Lee is pissed at her boyfriend. Mm. Yeah. She went along with his idea. But he has this whole thing, the whole way through the movie, like he is basically trying to sabotage their relationship, Jamie yeah. Lee's and her boyfriend. Right. Uh, like the whole way through the movie. He's going to sabotage <laughs> right. everything. Relationships, magic shows. Yeah, right. just for his own amusement, because we think which is like, he's a psychopath. Right. Yeah, yes. because oh, yeah. we think that like early on, she may have been dating Doc during the original prank. Okay, but... She was wearing his jersey. It feels like they have a history. The way he was talking about her, I was like, okay, so they're kind of dating and he... But like, it's not like serious enough that people know they're dating, and that's why she agrees to help him with this prank. In the yeah, okay. and then that's where their relationship ends because she's pissed at him. That's yeah. the impression I get. So that would yeah. explain then his uh, like animus towards her yes. the whole way is like she broke up with me before this, even though he's she's dating or he's dating uh, Mitchie. Mitchie. Right? Mm-hmm. Mitchie. Uh, so he has a new girlfriend, but he has no problem apparently just like calling out Jamie Lee every chance he can get and right. like trying right. to needle her because that's where he's really and he wants to split her and her new boyfriend up, mm-hmm. even though that's his his best friend. Yes. Right. Okay. And he's dating her best friend. Right. <clears throat> okay. Right. It's college. It's college. Yeah. Uh, okay. And in the middle, everyone swaps. I mean, yeah, on the train, at, at basically. Yeah. Point, at some point, the girls like go off to watch magic, and the guys are like, oh, new girls, let's go with you. Yeah. Wait, yeah. They go off to watch magic. What? Colin. Colin. Do we have another star of this movie? 
This is the one and only acting performance of none other than David Copperfield. Okay, first of all, not acting. Yeah. That's David Copperfield. Yeah. That man needs I'm silence sorry. when he does his illusions. I'm okay? sorry. Did you not see the intensity in his face? Saw it. That's him. Acting. He has he, killed people. He has screen presence. I guess he that's does. the thing. He with has this a guy. presence. Well, you have to presence. to be a magician, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You have yeah, to have like all this, presence. Right. To, like to have that haircut yeah. and be a magician, you yeah. got to have Okay. He might why? act on screen, but he performs a lot. Why so, like, is his look so 70s? In this movie, like, well, it's 80, he's, so I know, but like, I yeah. everyone he, else seems to have moved forward a bit. I think he and identified yeah. that he wasn't going to look good in the 80s, so he stuck with the 70s look. It's like, I'll, I'll hang on to this until something else comes along. Yeah, until something better. Cause... But like, the glow up he had in the 90s from this is a big difference. I Like, just the difference in him combing his hair backwards instead of forwards <laughs> made a huge difference in that right. guy's appearance. Uh, like, right. Well, he has like, it feels to me like, because I was watching him, he has a lot of... Uh, poses right he'll yes. end on a pose yep. it's very dramatic yeah. very but theatrical and he but never it's really also gives that up like if you've ever if you've ever watched his 90s specials he still did that but that's part yeah. of the appeal that's of watching his... david copper yeah. because he's just weird it's very in that way, dramatic but yeah, yeah but it also in this movie it kind of struck me as like that kind of disco saturday night fever very holdover yes. kind of thing like he's still hanging on with that. That's what know? I'm saying. Like he's yeah. hanging on to like a past aesthetic is what it feels like, right? Oh, yeah, like, but it's, like, but it's 1980. Years. We haven't yeah. gotten into by the time we get to 1985, then like 80s style sets. In. Right, so yeah. but I think that he, every, like I said, everyone Cultural else seepage. in this movie though feels like they've moved forward. Except him is what it feels like. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I, I mean, they maybe are all costumed. They, they yeah. all kind of have yeah. like a 70s air to them. I feel like. I mean, yeah, they they they're progressing a little bit, but I don't feel like they're that far off. Maybe magic hasn't moved past the seventies, and I that's what that it is. Yeah, <laughs> maybe magic is stuck I, in the seventies. I, I think magic was this until Chris Angel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> until we and got David Blaine. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was because I mean, until you got after, mind freaked. Yeah, yeah. After this, uh, because obviously this is before David Copperfield became like a huge uh, deal, and yeah, it's all rising those, at this point. Yeah, younger listeners, go ask your grandparents who. David Copperfield is, I guess. Not the Dickens one. Yeah. The guy yeah. who yeah. Uh, made get, the Statue of Liberty disappear. Uh, yeah, you remember his like Fox events, like the Dude, David Copperfield, like CBS like, TV. Yeah. That was before. Dude, I remember those fucking things when you when he would like, okay, now you at home, and he'd have you pick the card on the screen. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that messed up my head. Yeah, that was amazing. My then, mom was convinced he was a black magician. Ooh, really? Yeah. Black oh, yeah. magic. Black Ooh. magic. Is, that, is your oh, yeah. mom the reason? Your mom was just like, that's the devil. <laughs> that's the devil. Yeah. Is it's your like, mom... something wrong with this guy. Well, your mom's old school Irish, so yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Is your mom the reason they started doing those like behind the magic specials where they I showed wondered. how they did the tricks? <laughs> yeah, because they always did. Like, they, you know, this is how he uh, yeah. made the, the statue disappear. Yep. <laughs> this is how he yeah. did You're scaring the poor Catholics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... Okay, so we get a lot of David Copperfield in this movie. Yeah, I mean, this the is movie a party train, and what I mean, what brings a party train to life? More okay, than but a like, I train. thought it would be a cameo, a magic scene. Oh no, I did not know this was going <laughs> this to be is, he like, is like a centerpiece of this movie. Yeah. I, I would bet he probably has more screen time than Jamie Lee Curtis in this movie. He's got a lot. It's I, like got a lot. I think I liked his screen time more than Jamie Lee Curtis's. She's not yeah. doing much in this movie, is no, she? Not a whole lot. Yeah, not a whole lot. This Fizzle. is more Ben Johnson's movie, which yeah. is the conductor. Yeah, that's yeah. right. There yeah. are yeah. large chunks of time we don't see her. Yeah, because the 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 top billing Jamie Lee obviously hadn't become like a you know, top billed star yet, so she's mm -hmm. second billed behind Ben Johnson. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Ben Johnson, who we know from other uh, Saturday Night Freak Show movies such as The Town the Dreaded Sundown. Mm. He's also, I mean, if uh, I think once you know Ben Johnson, his face and his voice, like he did a bunch of westerns with John Wayne. I mean, he did a lot of westerns. Period. Um, yeah. The famous one, the Wild Bunch. He's in the Wild Bunch, yep. one of the greatest westerns of all time. He's in Shane, which we bring up yep, on the show because yeah. all, all, all movies go back to Shane. Yeah, they do. And he is also a rodeo world champion. Ooh, I mean, this, well he's a cowboy. Like, yeah, yeah. He I mean, like a legit like, like he had a, a horse legit. farm. Yes. Oh <laughs> like, yeah. He raised horses. Okay, I'm just saying it. There is a lot of talent in this movie. <laughs> yeah, but are they slumming on this movie? Is the it question. feels like they're phoning it in? I would say. I wouldn't say they're slumming it. I feel like they're like that. We can coast on this. You know. I yeah. Also, like, well, yeah. On the talent end, you've got uh, John Alcott like shot this movie. Uh, John Alcott was Stanley Kubrick's uh, right. cinematographer, oh, right? He shot yeah. uh, 2001. Uh, Clockwork Orange, he won an Oscar. <laughs> he shot Barry Lyndon, 
Which Barry Lyndon was the Stanley Kubrick movie where like natural light only. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna this say, is the guy. Sean, <laughs> this is you were saying there's not enough lights in this movie because no one flips the lights on it. Oh, this is yeah. why this guy. Is John, this yeah. guy was like oh, natural he's light like, only. I know how to do He's it. Like, we'll light it with the moon. It's like, yeah. we're inside. We'll yeah. light it with the moon. Just do it. We're going to light it with the moon. Just the train windows. Whatever light comes yep. in the train windows, that's it. This guy yeah. went through and like covered up every light switch on yep. that train. I know. So again, you're like from, from Stanley, because he did The Shining. Well, he would have done The Shining either this, this year, year this came yeah. out. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's crazy. <laughs> who else? What a year. Yeah, I know, right? Um Okay, but the idea that this is uh, so it's on a train, which is like it's a it's um, a claustrophobic setting for a slasher movie. Yeah, it is. It yeah. also feels very, I well, it is claustrophobic. Also, it feels it's very one way for a killer who's got to like get all over the place. It's a very I go this way or go this way, and that's all. Okay, you got. but imagine how David Copperfield feels. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. At In one point, way. he does that illusion. Where he's on stage and then Kapoof, he's in the back of the room. I think, like, yeah. I think that's why he, he took the train. Is he's like, I want to. He's like, I have to test myself and my abilities. If I can pull off this magic on a train, he I am the best. He hated doing magic on uh, this train. I can only imagine. Yeah. Like, he, the characters. He just hated like, doing magic for a movie because he was like, this is really difficult to not give my secrets away right now. Right. Wouldn't yeah. it be easier though? Because wouldn't no. you just be able to like edit? Around See, things my, in a way that would, that would you know, be, you even have yeah. to do the trick, right? Okay, you guys just insulted David Copperfield, yeah. right? Because he, he would not, David Copperfield would not be like, fake my tricks. Yeah. No, 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 <laughs> no seriously. Kidding me? Because it was not edited. He did all of his tricks, but like if they caught, he'd have to like start over. And it's hard right. to do that with a trick. But I'm and just also, saying, he didn't have to do it that way, though. The movie magic, you could just. I know. I was together. Gonna, that close that's up, the irony close of up it. on yeah. the quarter. He's he's almost giving away a lot right there. Yeah, with the quarter trick. Yeah. I'm like, I can see things. Yeah, but I mean, that yeah. is the, the 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 thing that movies, I guess, like don't afford you is you don't believe magic done in movies yes. is like you know. The only reason that I, I mean, think this works is because we know who David Copperfield <laughs> is, and we're like. David Copperfield probably was actually doing <laughs> right, that yeah. shit. Like, yes. And the camera guys are just trying to catch it. Right. You know, right. Happening. Um, okay. So there's. He, he would have to be careful because you can. Now we have the ability like to stop and go slow mo on right. this stuff. To, well, and like, so he's like got to cover it. I imagine one of like, the scene that really killed him was when he's doing a trick and he's literally like, there's a crowd of people behind him and in front of him mm -hmm. and he disappeared and his assistant was in his place. Mm -hmm. The entire crowd behind him saw what he did, mm -hmm. you know, like that had to have killed him. He hated it. <gasps> yeah, that. but come on. The entire crowd saw what he did with the vanishing, the 747 liner, and right. the Statue of Liberty. Like they had to be in on it. Well, and is no. it? Oh, that was real. What? Well, and yeah. Isn't okay. Chris Angel's whole thing is that he can do just like tricks on the street, right? Chris yeah, Angel's whole thing is he just yeah. Go, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like, do you think Chris Angel saw this movie and was like, take it on a train, huh? What about the subway, the street corner? I'll just walk up to people and do tricks. Yeah. Like he's getting people from all angles when he does those. So yeah, who's I the better magician? This, uh, David Copperfield starts out doing that, you know, like uh, street magic in the car yeah. before the, his up, show, the up close magic. Yeah, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. that's what they call it. Yeah, now yeah. it's street magic. Go I guess. warm them up. Do some up close. Magic. <clears throat> it's like mm -hmm. magic in the round. No, yeah. right, where you have a crowd all around you who can see what's going on and can mm -hmm. you. We're talking about because yeah, this movie does feature a lot of David a lot of magic. magic. He becomes a suspect in the movie. Like, does. Like, How many so. different tricks do we see? Probably like six or seven. Like, was there any point that you kind of thought like, okay, I think it really was the magician? Like, did you get there? no? I was like, why are we spending so much fucking time on this guy? Because it's clearly not him. Like, oh really? Yeah. Okay, because the movie. I saw the you. cold open of the movie. I know who's doing it. <laughs> okay, all right. All you right. know what I'm saying? Like, I, I saw the inciting incident. I know someone who has a good reason to be doing this because you, you didn't think that Kenny was the magician. No, that he like just looked no. different now. No. Okay. Three years. Uh, we're told between the yeah, cold you open have and a big that's plastic up in surgery. Three years. You can have a big glow mm -hmm. up in three years. Yeah, because everybody's yeah. like, ah, oh, it's probably it's him. Cause he had an interest in magic, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's the magician. Yeah. How come we n didn't notice? Like right. maybe because that's David Copperfield. But okay. yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, but the other, uh, I guess, thing that this movie has going on with it is that the killer um, uh, adopts the because it's a masquerade, right? So the killer adopts the costume worn by his victim, right? 
So he's always changed. Didn't fucking Slaughter High also do that? Maybe not. Right. It was the jester the whole time. Yeah, it was the, the jester. Yeah, the, jester okay. the whole time. But New Year's Evil is a very similar look yeah. to this movie. Yeah. Mm. Especially because at the end, the, the third the Groucho act. Marks, uh, well, the yeah. plastic face mask at the end, too. Yeah, yeah. I was like, wow, what is up with New Year's Eve and these like plastic face masks? It's killers? all about hiding who you are. I don't. We're going to have to dig into some New Year's tradition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> research after this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> New person at midnight. That's what I'm going with. I'm just, I'm gonna, yeah, but like, like plant my flag on that. Yeah. Just, right, but how, but the clear plastic mask yes. being in both New Year's Evil and this movie, and both Alice, set on New Alice. Year's, is very specific. <laughs> so who does our so our, how does our killer get on? Well, as far as the movie tells us, right. how how does the killer get on board, and who is his first victim? Uh, his first Eddie was what Edward. Yeah, his first victim is Eddie. Uh, who's dressed as Groucho Marx, mm-hmm. and he s- impales him with a sword. Well, Eddie stumbles <laughs> up to the train. Like, we've seen Eddie before yeah. in his Groucho costume, but then at a certain point, he just stumbles up to the train with a sword in his stomach, and, and everybody's... Bleeding profusely, and everybody's right. like, ah, Eddie, that's a Eddie, great joke. So Hilarious. Because he's a practical joker, so nobody Who is believes it. Yeah, he probably p- came up with the prank yeah. at the beginning of the movie Classic or whatever. Classic Eddie, and everyone, you know, gets on the train. Yeah. So the f- killer first walks around wearing the Groucho Marx uniform. That's one of the one that's on the poster. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, so, okay. So I guess the other thing that like a, uh, the prerequisite of the 1980s slasher wave was uh, inventive murder sequences and grotesque makeup effects. Sure. Okay. How did Roger Spottiswood do? With Terror Train. Not well. There there wasn't much. <laughs> There's not much. <laughs> yeah. Not There's, at all. Okay. Because he, I think this is the thing. Uh, he's trying to do, because, I mean, originally they had said that uh, this was basically going to be Halloween on a, on a, they made it because of Hall- the success of Halloween. Right. Obviously. Oh, yeah. There, there's, there's a story about the, how this movie was conceived. Um. Daniel Grodnick, uh, producer, <laughs> he's had, he had watched Halloween and Silver Streak with his wife one weekend. And at one point he turned to his wife and he's like, what do you think about Halloween on a train? <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, you can do Die Hard on a train. Yeah. You can do Halloween he's on like, a train. like, what do you think about Halloween on a train? And she's like, well, that's terrible. So he wrote down terrible train. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then the next day he wrote like 20 pages and pitched it and John Carpenter gave his blessing and that's terror train. Okay. I so actually have to go no, to John no, Carpenter. No, no. We want to do Halloween no. on a train, John. Is that right. cool? And John's sitting there going like, man, I don't Universal give a wants me to do Halloween too. There goes that idea. Mm-hmm. Can't do it on a train. Hospital. Then. The, the movie, um, the movie scene where this happens is somebody throws the script down and they cross off Ibble mm-hmm. and add an O-R and he's like, there's your movie. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the Hollywood mm-hmm. best part of it. It's like, whoosh, Terror Train. How about Terror Train? It's cleaner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Terrible yeah. Train. Was this movie remade as Train? There was a movie called, called, train, called train, like during that era when they remade in the 2000s where they remade everything because uh, is Thora Birch in it? They remade. I like, don't know night. anything about this movie. I don't know yeah. what you're talking about. But I'm not sure if it uh, like started as a remake of Terror Train and then it became something else and it just came out as Train. And I could be wrong, but Captain Google is on the case. Traveling and- aboard a Russian train, a college wrestle, a college wrestler, Thora Birch. Mm-hmm. She's the wrestler. And her she's teammates, the wrestler. She's the, that's what I'm saying. She's the wrestler. <laughs> okay. And her teammates fall victim to a gang of sadistic thieves harvesting human organs. Okay. No, never Not mind. Is it Not that's closer same. to Midnight Meat Train? Yeah. That's what it feels yeah. like. Okay. But Thor Birch is the wrestler. I, okay. All right. Uh, All right. Great. All right. Then there you go. Check that one out. Train. What year? So well, people, when they Google it no, or look it up on their stream, just Google Thor Birch Train. It's uh, the only, 2008. 2008. There you go. Um, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Okay, so uh, he's not really, he's trying to do like more by implication, not dwelling on the gory violence, but yeah. Okay. He's, he's, we see the aftermath of a lot of kills, but not the actual kills. I think there's seven kills in this movie, and I think four of them happen off camera. Yeah. Yeah. He's really depending on the suspense of Ben Johnson in this movie. Yeah. What's Ben Johnson doing in this movie? I mean, I guess that's what we got to talk about. What's Jamie Lee Curtis doing, and what's Ben Johnson doing? What do you mean by doing? What's their character arc? Or their like, characters? how are they forwarding the plot? 
Well, Ben Johnson's the conductor, so he's kind of in charge of the whole thing. He's making his way back and forth. Doing his own magic tricks. I mean, oh, this, man. This is this guy. <laughs> there's a lot of jealousy over the magic of David Copperfield. I know Hart Bachner's all pissed at the magician because, like, uh, anybody can do that. Right. The uh, why are they so threatened by a magician? <laughs> I'm, did you because, see him? <laughs> David Copperfield could get any woman on that train after that show. Yeah, he, he had me. I'm just saying. <laughs> he can produce a rose and make it float in front of you. Yeah, I mean, like bam. Did you see that gaze? Like if I could do that, oh. I'd do it all the time. <laughs> all the time. I I, do, I feel like I'm just not that impressed by magic. Maybe I'm just one of these people that's just not that impressed by magic. I guess like. I mean, if David Copperfield walked up to you and just stared into your soul with those eyes. I would say, what year is it? <laughs> Michaela, Have I time traveled? This is where Michaela and I differ. She's like, fuck you. And I'm like, my pants are already off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, see, it works for some women. David Copperfield. <laughs> you prefer this haircut or modern? Modern? No, 90s. Okay. Yeah, the yeah, 90s not haircut. Modern. Not modern. I haven't seen him in years. I don't no. know. Yeah, what does... Do yeah, I was just going to say, I got to yeah. Google. What does David Copperfield look, look like He's in 2021? Got He's got to have a Twitter. He just seems like he would. No, no way he'd have a Twitter. He'd have an Instagram. I think he's he far too nothing. pretentious for any he's of that. He's got a Twitter. You know who's really... He owns you know islands. Really That's his whole thing now, right? You know who's really entertaining at Twitter is Richard Marks, shockingly enough. Really? Yeah. Really? Got some uh, good jabs. Okay, so <laughs> I guess so. Ben Johnson, aside from being an amateur, he magician, looks like a politician now. Yeah, that's not. Yeah, he's, <laughs> time has not been he kind. Looks scary. We're now looking yeah. at his photos eyes got of, bigger, and so did his eyebrows. He looks yeah. like Peter Gallagher's stunt man. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Doesn't Very he? Very angry stunt man. Yeah, Was, is this him in court for some reason? Did he go to court? <laughs> oh god! Oh, he fell the, down. Oh, okay. He's fine. I was like, oh, God, is there some story about him now? I oh, yeah, I see the picture of him in the hospital bed. Oh, is that? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> this is the stuff that comes up. when he's <laughs> yeah. not, not him vanishing, <laughs> no. no, crossing but the Grand does, Canyon. Does he have a residency in Vegas still or no? no. I think he's retired. Or something. He's, so. he's managing, I think he has like 11 islands or something. That Why? Because he, you can perform he's on that those. rich? Yeah. He's that he got rich. A, in the 90s, he got a shit ton of money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, he those Vegas the, residencies can make a, a fuck ton. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, I mean, how much do you think you're getting paid for an event where you make the Statue of Liberty disappear? Yeah. Before money. David Blaine. Like, All right, David, Chris, bring it back. <laughs> 10 million. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So, Ben Johnson, though, like, yes. what's, what's, what's yeah. he up to on this train? Is he's going back and forth, and then he discovers. Well, he discovers the first body in the bathroom, the very bloody bathroom. Um,. The lizard costume. The lizard man. Yeah, the lizard. Because this is when we go from, jacket. with a groucho to li- who's that great jacket? He has the lizard guy. He's got like the shoulder things going uh, on. The well, '80s like shoulder pads. In they're not costume? even shoulder pads. They're like I don't know what you call it. I don't know. I don't know. You don't I, don't know. I don't know. No. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Just just the lizard. Fine. Costume. Yeah. Fine. Never mind. Maybe um, it was wait. an illusion, Holly. Maybe there really wait, wasn't are you a talking jacket. About, like, when he was doing his toast off the bus, he had a jacket on. No. Sorry, Holly. But his costume his lizard a great jacket? jacket? Yes! No, nobody has any idea what you're talking about. Yeah, it was an illusion. But he finds the first body, and so he's he's become aware that, or well, he thinks. Or has he? Ah. Because when he goes back later, <laughs> it's gone. No blood. The body is still there, but it's just yeah, a it's drunk the person. the killer pretending, yeah, has now donned the lizard costume and yes. pretending to be drunk. And of course, this would be when the moment when the movie would be over, because... The authorities should go, like, take your mask off. Who are Say you? Say something. Right. Mm-hmm. But no, they just hand him off on... A bunch uh, of drunk what kids. What was her name? Uh, Mitchie. Mitchie. Mitchie grabs him. Yep. Who takes him away, because Mitchie's having problems. There's a whole bunch of, like, uh, character dynamics going on here, where the arguments. guys that they're dating are going off with other girls, and so she goes off with another guy, but it turns out that her guy... Is the guy, if you know what I mean. And so she gets killed in the. <laughs> we do know what you mean, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Off screen, she gets killed. Yeah. We see the screen. remnants. Yeah. And does he, he doesn't, well, he does take her costume, her mask. What he takes her mask. Her mask. Oh, like yeah. yeah. She has a witch. She's a witch. She's like a witch mask. Right, it's like right, an old hag. Right. Yeah. Very true. Which comes back later. So Ben Johnson is trying to convince uh, Charlie, the, 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 con- the driver. What's He's the, the brakeman. Is that what it's called? I, his head. Yeah. He's got the yeah. Brake man. Yeah. yeah. He was credited as Brakeman, okay. too. Yeah. He's the Brake Man. Okay. So uh, he's trying to convince him. No, there's something up on this train. Uh, I found a dead man. Then dead man wasn't dead after all. But then I found a dead girl. Somebody's <laughs> killing somebody on this train. 
And so then he's like, we got to stop the train. Or does he even do that? Yeah, but no one no one saw a dead boy. But then uh, Jamie Lee Curtis witnessed Sees dead, dead girl. Right, dead Mitchie. Okay. And yeah. then they decide to hang out for like five minutes and talk. Yeah. It's not until <laughs> it's not Hart Bachner yeah. finds dead. Until Hart Bachner starts freaking out. Um, Mitchie, when they all find that Mitchie is dead, that's when he starts freaking out and pulling the emergency switch. Yeah, but it was when I thought his, he freaks out when Mo dies. Yeah, his buddy Mo. He doesn't care James, about Mitchie. He cares about Mo. Are they? Does he have like latent homosexual feelings? It for feels Mo? that way, but I don't know. They're just like he's like bros maybe that's he's, he's like, maybe really that's why he's sending them to break up secretly. He's jealous. Like he, you think he's sending them so he gets broken up with Jamie Lee Curtis. He is so that he can Would have it Jamie shock Lee Curtis. You to hear that there was a scene cut where the two of them kiss. Uh, oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, considering a guy who after he was dead, after he was a corpse, no, because psychopath. Okay, no. no. <laughs> you wouldn't ask that question. Wait, pre or post death? <laughs> Gotta be pre, sure. Pre mortem. <laughs> there was like a long sequence that took place after. There's a, there's a stiff joke in there somewhere, but I won't. I mean, that's good enough. I won't touch it. <laughs> but after uh, <laughs> Doc <laughs> discovers that there are dead bodies and he tries to stop the train yes. Yes. where that takes place in his cabin because they they do they get the train to stop in the middle of nowhere. They get everybody off the train. We're like, we're going to check every single one of you, mm -hmm. but the killer isn't here. We can't tell who the killer is. And so they're out in the middle of nowhere. And then Doc is now like he grabs Jamie Lee. He's like, I'm going to save your life. And he locks him both in his cabin mm -hmm. and this goes on for like 10 minutes where she leaves but he's in the cabin alone convinced yeah. that the killer's in the cabin with him so he's checking in the closets mm -hmm. not that closet maybe this closet yeah he's freaking not that out he's either. paranoid maybe this closet yep mm -hmm. and then maybe on top of the closet and then maybe on it goes on it's like this yeah yeah it distended kind of like okay and then lo and behold the killer is actually in his in his room the ankle grab yeah and kills him, grab. slits his throat or something. We're not entirely sure, yeah. I think. There's we're a little, death, yeah. at this point, I think we're a little, um, the audience should be a little confused as to what's going on because our killer seems to have, I forgot, pain and nails. I don't know why that escaped my mind. He has pain and nails. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. During this one scene. During anyway, this one during scene. during the earlier ones. No, because no. Because all we really see is the killer, the, the mask of the current victim and his hands. Yes. Yeah. And we see hands earlier close the bathroom door with no. Yeah, and then nail polish. And then w again with um, Mitchie, we see the hand. Yeah. No fingernail polish. Right. Yeah. So this may be for astute viewers who were watching this for the first time a tell. But we'll come back to that. Okay. I'll tell you what. It's not. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. first of all, I know that it's not. Before we tell you who the killer is and get to the end of this movie, okay, so Jamie Lee Curtis is in this movie. Mm -hmm. yeah, sort of. A little okay. bit. Okay. Is she like a protagonist who is affecting the outcome of the plot? No. She's reacting to everything. Okay, that's a, like a, uh, it's a, it's a little bit of a problem. It is a problem, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Especially because after seeing Halloween or even like The Fog, you're like, this is her movie. She's going to drive the plot forward, and she's just kind of like a passive participant in this movie, I think. Dude, until I the, remember, until the, yeah. well, when I saw Prom Night, Prom Night is kind of, I mean, it's not a, a very good slasher movie. It has logic problems you can drive a bus through. Mm -hmm. But Jamie Lee Curtis in that movie, like, you watch her and you're like, she's got that X factor that this is a star in the making. Yeah, that Britney Snow probably does not have yeah. in the remake. <laughs> and I think, and like, watching her performance in this, you can still see it in this, but they're not giving her much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't come off as strong. Like Prom no. Night, however, yeah. it was like, she's a star. And this one, it's like, oh, she's in the movie. She's going to do something. Yeah. She's going to do something that has an outcome on the bearing of the the movie. It's, I guess it's because by virtue of the plot structure, she ends up being the his final victim because she's the one who actually enticed him to the room. Uh, mm -hmm. for the prank, right? So he's killing everybody yes. else, yeah. and he's saving his, uh, you know, ultimate revenge for her, I suppose. Ironically, she's the only one who really feels uh, remorse it, for yeah. it. Yeah. Because um, they they mention this prank a couple times, and everyone else is just kind of, like, passive about it. They'd be like, yeah, it happened. It's not a big deal. Where she's, like, had clear guilt about it all these years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
she still feels bad because yeah. she also she also knows a little bit more than everybody else. But she reveals when everybody's standing outside after they've been tossed off the train. Mm-hmm. That's when she reveals that Kenny oh. was sick. Yeah, she mm-hmm. went to see she him, went to see him afterwards, yeah. and yes. nobody else did. Right. I wonder if she knew that they had a corpse in the bed. I don't she think so. Her face in the because she goes, "Who's that?" What did she think the prank was then? I think she thought it was just going to be a dummy. Dummy. Or I don't a- think she knew it was going to be a corpse. Yeah, or some old, old lady or something. Like, it wasn't going to be her. I don't I know what the th- prank would have been. I think she assumed it was going to be like a blow-up doll or, something, or something. Yeah, something, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Well, I thought she said, like, something at the beginning, like, when they're when they're explaining to her, like, her role in the prank, prank she's like, okay, well, but I don't like it. Like, it's like, right. okay, so you, what you do know, even if it is a dummy, you're still not on board with it, but you're still going to do it. Yeah, you like, still know that it's bullying yeah. and it's mean, but you're still doing it. Yeah, so... Still don't feel bad for you. Yeah. It, no, you're you were an active participant in this horrible, brutal hazing. Mm-hmm. Don't feel bad you gotta for you. You got to stay in with your clique. This is what the clique is doing. And so nope. it's okay as long it's as you're with, with the problem with Greek life. This yeah. kind of shit. So the ultimate, uh, ultimately, uh, Ben Johnson and Jamie Lee. I, no, Jamie Lee and Hart Bachner. Somehow Jamie Lee gets the idea that now in the, you know, I look back in the yearbook. And uh, Kenny was into magic. Ergo, right. it's the magician. So we got to right. lock the magician in the back of the, you know, get his assistant out and lock him in the back of the train. And then right. it's like, where'd he go? Later, it's found out that the magician is dead. <gasps> Who killed David, the magician? No. Where is he found, though? This is. In his trunk. Which trunk? The one that gets the, the spears, swords the swords it. through it. Yeah. What? Well, I know it's for stuff like this, going back and be like, well, they should have done this. But. When Ben Johnson and crew are exploring the back end and going through all the magic stuff. They should have looked in that case? No, but they should have done something like, like Ben Johnson is, he wants to be a magician. He he's th- thinks he knows some old tricks and he thinks he's part of the, you know, we never reveal our secrets and he's talking like yeah. that. He thinks he's the elite. Yes, he does. He thinks yeah. he's part of the group. But when they. <laughs> That's right. He does. Yeah, he does. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We yeah. don't tell her. But yeah. when they were going back, he should have found like one of the swords on the floor. And shoved it to like, oh, this belongs in here. Shoved it through. That would have been cool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And been like, it's a little tough to get yeah. through. And yeah. then the reveal later that he just put another there you knife go. That's into remake. See, remake yeah. ideas like right that there. Would have been yeah, cool. Some little touches <laughs> like right. that would have been great. Because like, he could have played it off. He got to touch the sword and put it in the box and be part of the magic right there. But then he right. just shoved it the sword. I was yeah. hoping when the trunk opened, doves would fly out too. That, that would have been, been really funny. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're that taking notes, good. future yeah. screenwriters. There you go. We should copyright this that uh, been 2021 good. Saturday Night Freak Show. Terror Train Like If you're going to have a magician, really go You got to go for it. Except that there's one pigeon just stuck to the side of the Yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, we got yeah. that one. <laughs> no, but instead we get a, bu- a bunch. We find out that Ben Johnson's an RV salesman. He's only doing this on the side. Yeah, the we don't know thing. a lot about Ben train Johnson. Train industry is going to Who shit. Who cares? Okay. Uh, funny- so, no, his friend tries to convince him Rails coming back. Dude. The funny thing is, is that he had even more lines than this. And oh, it was Ben Johnson who was like, I think we need to tone down my dialogue. He's like, I <laughs> good think, for oh, him. Yeah. yeah, good for him. He's like, I think we're going to get more out of it if I don't have so many lines. He had more. <laughs> he Jesus had more. What more. He's in enough of this movie. I know. Yeah, he really is. It's not, none of it's important. Either. No, it's none not. of it's important. It's not 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 well, important. It, the only thing, like, I guess he is the main protagonist of the movie only in that he uh, seems to be on the case of what's happening, mm-hmm. what's really happening before everybody else. Mm-hmm. And he does play an act part in the uh resolving the the situation that's true right i feel like we don't know anything about jamie lee curtis's character she has no personality no nothing she's and just she doesn't she doesn't change the ending no. like you know there's uh scenes where she's with the killer and trying to survive the killer because this was done in halloween i guess and this is the template that they're going for once the movie starts and the killer and the final girl which had you know that that wasn't a thing back back when this movie came out right we're still inventing the language of the slasher movie but when uh killer and final victim because it's always like killer is somehow able to kill his victims fairly he sneaks up on him and kills him pretty quickly but whenever he gets that final one there's some quality that makes it harder to kill this one you know right because of the She's usually that thing that Roger Ebert used to call the fallacy of the talking killer, where they have to explain <laughs> something to their victim mm-hmm. about, like, uh, you know, instead of just killing them. Yeah, they, they give away their why. plan. They give, give away their plan. Yeah. 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 I mean, if you were getting revenge on someone, wouldn't you want them to know why? Yeah, because I think that's what does makes revenge sweeter. Not that well, I'm going around getting a lot of revenge, but. No, it makes sense. <laughs> 
Yeah. But if you brutally hate someone, I think you know why, right? You know why they're coming for you? Like, oh, yeah, we did that corpse thing to you three years ago. It makes sense why you'd come for me. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Need okay. to explain that. <laughs> but I mean, maybe he's just got a. Maybe he's been. He's probably been practicing like a speech or a monologue at this point. Oh, yeah, like, that's you true. You got to get those final words. Yeah. And say, what like, would you, like, he's thought, like, he's, what would he, I say? He's been in the shower. The shower. I was going to say the shower <laughs> argument. He's been in the shower. <laughs> the shower argument. Thinking about what he's going to yes. say. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. And you for always three years, do want just that. Just open up and being like, oh, well, what did he yeah. come up with? Not much. He came up with. <gasps> Well, yeah. because he wanted to actually get the kiss that he was promised uh, yes. back then, which is like, okay, you know, whatever they're doing is some kind of like psychological motivation mm-hmm. for this guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She kisses him under duress and mm-hmm. it causes him to spin, you know, like become back in that moment again. Yeah. Looney which is tunes when- into some coats and curtains. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because we don't have sexy netting nope. available on the train. Which but- why not? This train has like a lounge, a bar, a band. Yeah. State. It has a, why not have sexy netting? It That's would true. fit in on this train. That's right. The band uh, Crime is crime. Uh, crime. At this point. Crime. Yeah, it'd yeah. be funny if there was sexy netting on the train, and he just saw that and that triggered him. And you know, and that's all it took. Right. And yeah. the beginning of the movie, he gets on. He's like, ah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that opens the window. The 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 uh, opens an opportunity for Ben Johnson to come in. With uh, the most Looney Tunes scene of the whole movie. <laughs> Holy the shit. Coal shovel. Yeah, a coal shovel. Because well, yeah. you're on a train. You're on a train. And knock the fucker right out the yep. window or he falls to his death off of the uh, train. and Almost the, made it too. <laughs> off the bridge. Yeah, and he falls going, off a bridge and it's like a frozen river and there's a hole in the ice and you think he's going to go in the hole in the ice, but like Looney Tunes, no, he lands like just <laughs> to the left. <laughs> and, uh, and, yeah. Yeah. and they must have been like, we're going to need you to sweeten up that sound. We got to make sure he's dead. Yeah. And so they're just like, <laughs> Yeah. Like he hits yeah, hard. It's pretty yeah. good. Hard. Yeah, it's yeah. good. I like, like that. It's what it yeah, needs like, to be. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. It's a good clunk, yeah. yeah. He is dead. There's no coming back from this because there is a couple fake outs, you know, where he mm-hmm. goes out the window and then. Or off the side of the train. Yeah, yeah. And then he's like crawling around outside. And I'm like, how is he doing? He's upside down, crawling downside, but whatever. Who was he? Because at that point, it's revealed. Right. Who well, he I guess was. the yeah. question is how, so, yeah, but for the audience, like, how does a killer move unseen through. Uh, the group on the train illusion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it not a good illusion though because so that face is distinct. So you, I was like, something's up with the assistant because no, she's yeah. crazy looking. As soon as she had her reveal, I was like, man, she's ugly. That, I said, I said that is. I, in <laughs> yeah. my, I didn't want to say a lot because I thought it was mean, but no, in I my know. head, I was like, that is an ugly woman. Yeah, me too. I was <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, I mean, magicians' assistants are notoriously beautiful. Yeah, right? like, yeah, because like, they need to distract. Yeah, I'm like, like she's ugly. <laughs> she was very like skeletally well, thin. You look, there's some shots and, yeah. where they linger on her a little bit long and you could see her muscles. Yeah, like, exactly. Very muscly. Yeah. And I was like, this is, I was like, this is a choice. There's, there's a reason this person looks this way. Mm. Yeah. And, yeah. No and, disrespect to Derek McKinnon who actually did have a drag show. And well, good part, of, part of the reason he was uh, hired for this part. Gotcha. Yeah. But like when you have vanity in a yeah. movie. We didn't talk uh, like, about vanity. Vanity, yeah, movie. Yeah, vanity right. is what you like imagine a magician's assistant yes. to look like, That's you know? Yeah, yeah, she's so beautiful. Was this like her first movie? She's very young. I think so. Gotta be. I think so. But did you know that we are inducting vanity? I was oh, saying, nice. This is it. We're bringing vanity to the wall. Okay, what's vanity on the wall for? The Last Dragon. Yes. Never Too Young to Die. Yes. This movie. And this, this movie. movie. <laughs> I was like, this is the third All right. Yeah. Yeah, so there you go. Vanity <laughs> has been uh, forever immortalized on the Saturday Night Freak Show mm-hmm. Wall of Fame. There we go. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I guess that's the thing. Uh, 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 Kenny has disguised himself as the mm-hmm. assistant. Mm-hmm. Who was guess- also shot like Kenny was at the beginning of the movie. Mm-hmm. Well, there were scenes watching it this time because I guess it did kind of take me by surprise the first time I saw it, and that was many years ago. Obviously, you didn't, Colin. You didn't think, "Wow, it's an ugly woman" when she was revealed. Uh, I saw it on VHS. Oh, and, so that helped and the, <laughs> softened it. But everyone and, is ten times better looking on VHS. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's there's many times when uh, watching it tonight, I was like, "Okay, so how'd they do this to me?" <laughs> when, when she would like be close to the camera, mm-hmm. the the lighting is all fucked up. Like mm-hmm. uh, it's uh, you know through a lot of uh, shadow, mm-hmm. right. or she turned toward the camera in close up at one point, and they cut right, right she, then. She turns on the cuts. Yeah, like yeah. she turns to look at the camera. Cut to yeah. whatever Which the other yeah, character yeah, yeah, looking yeah. the other way. So they do try to camouflage it. Yeah. I mean, like she's seen. and the lighting's not great on her in some scenes. Mm-hmm. Her like yeah. face is in more darkness yeah. and all that. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I guess I was surprised. I guess gotcha. the first time I saw it, now you it, more it sophisticated like, oh, viewers. Oh, the VHS <laughs> filter it does a lot. Yes. So, but I do appreciate um, when he went in to audition for this part. It wasn't actually his audition. He brought a friend who was auditioning for the part, and he just he was his ride. So he brought him with, and they passed on the friend. They're like, "But you." Would you want to try out? And they're, he's like, yeah, why not? So they he had like three callbacks and they're like, you're the guy. This that is must it. suck to be and the friend was, that would actually audition. And he was just like, okay, cool. And then they were like, do you understand what just happened? And he was like, yeah, I got a part. And they're like, no, you got like a lead part in a 20th Century Fox star, starring Jamie Lee Curtis. And he's like, oh. Because <laughs> I thought this was a pickup. Like Fox distributed because they didn't have a slasher movie and everybody else did. So they're mm-hmm. like. All right, we'll buy this one. This cheap Canadian movie, but it did have Jamie Lee Curtis in it. Yeah. I also heard that he was a problem for the director because he was, yeah, because he was very inexperienced. Yeah, he's not an actor. <laughs> he's yeah. not an actor. So I guess that was, you know, yeah. Well, I can yeah. tell by the first section editing <laughs> incident. That yeah, he was he, not the, an actor. the director later said, "Like, I think he did a good job, but during the filming, it didn't go well. They right, didn't have a yeah. good relationship. No, yeah, yeah." So it's very shocking. He goes off the end of the drink and uh, boom, you're done. Like that's Credits. it. <laughs> like, <laughs> get the fuck out. Yep, love it. Which is what we like. We about like the that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I guess every time they stick around in a modern movie, you're like, all right, what's coming? Yeah. The movie's over. Credits. The movie is over. Yeah, so right. let's leave. Yeah. yeah. I don't care if they're happy now. The yeah. They, gotta, they feel like they got to tie up all the loose. No, 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 no. Done. Yeah. Yeah. Done. He's gone. Yeah. That's all we need. Because I'm going to say this to you, aspiring filmmakers out there who are listening. When you do it like this and you're just like boom killer done out the door lights are coming up you are going to provoke more chatter in the movie theater because you're just like you know what the you know people yeah. are going to talk right and i think that that wind down like diffuses that it does because yeah. then you're like oh, all right well let's go home mm-hmm. where this you're like wait what <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I would have liked to have seen Terra Train back in the day, but uh, in the theater, yeah. who knows? If you saw it in the theater, tell us if that happened. Uh, <laughs> that's when, that's, I wish I had that superpower to go back and see movies for the first time. I know, right? Yeah. When time travel's perpe- perfected, we'll do that as a free, we'll do I know. freak show field we'll trips take it away to the past. Michaela. We are not, we can't, no, we are not responsible enough to have time travel. <laughs> no, we should not have time no, travel. Don't I'm going to say that, that No, we should not. I, don't give us that power. If we have time travel, we're going to go watch movies with it. We are the people that should <laughs> yeah. have time I, I travel. I'm totally that's responsible. What, if we have it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, just don't give it to Sean. Ourselves. Yeah. yeah, okay. What? Well, you said you were, I'm like, I'm totally trust with you. No, I want to go back and see things in history. <laughs> Holly's going to bump something. You're going to butterfly <laughs> effect the shit no, out of oh, it. Hands says. down. <laughs> hands down. I'm going to fuck things up. Yeah, you're like, I want to give You're going to bump something and we're all going to turn French. Yeah. Like, that's what's going to happen. Cool. Give you that <laughs> that's, is that like your worst case scenario? We're all going to turn French? I want to be French. If that's <laughs> worst case scenario, I'll take it. Okay, fine. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, You'll thank me when I tell you who Jack the Ripper was. <laughs> this is very true. I want to know. You'll thank me. <laughs> Okay, so Ooh, uh, on, Kennedy first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we know who. That's a Kennedy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're gonna read some of your <laughs> mail. Just walks up behind him. What you doing there? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> mm-hmm. Done. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but in order to do that, we're gonna have to summon our mailman. His name's Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. I wanted to see how much longer you were going to carry on that bit, Sean. I was like, <laughs> what's the next history thing he's no, going to jump to? I saw Colin to? waiting. I'm just like, all right, I'm done. Col- Colin landing. was giving you the move it along look. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm just like, I'm done. Yeah. I'm sorry. Colin's well, cueing the music. Yeah. <laughs> we want to let you know how you can participate in this interactive portion of our show by, again, going over to our social media. And as a reminder, that's Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Email. Saturday Night Freak Show Yahoo.com. And Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show about tonight's movie, which was Terror Train. Mark Harrison Terror writes Train. in and says, this film is far too similar to Prom Night. I haven't seen Prom Night in I've a while. It's very similar to this movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Peter Gett says, the last time I watched Terror Train was in 2015. I really didn't think that much of it. But as I started it today, I was thinking the opening of this and Prom Night are a little bit similar. 
I guess I got to go watch Prom Night. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, it sounds like you don't need to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a very similar movie. Uh, Brett Williams says this one has been on my watch list for decades. It's a good excuse to finally talk the wife to watch it. She loves Halloween and other uh, non gore slasher flicks. So I think this one, which I think this one falls into. There you go. You would be yeah, right. You would be correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, I literally just learned about this around Halloween, and there's not really much in this movie that you can't look at and say, well, that's problematic, including David Copperfield. <laughs> ah, very true. I love the David Copperfield zing. Get him. Uh, Adam Kaler says, masks, magic, murder, and mayhem on a train? How could it possibly go so off the rails. That premise. Oh, there it is. That premise never loses steam. Oh, oh. Adam was. Uh, he's yeah, he's on. Yeah. Get, I want gotta three more. One rule of three. No, you, no, you gotta, you gotta go until the dead quiet, and then you gotta bring it back to the last. Like <laughs> it's a big cycle, but you can do it. I appreciated those jokes. <laughs> those are great. Uh, yeah. About last week's episode, which was society. Stephanie Barisa says, "I sadly don't remember all of it, but oh my." This scene, which we put posted some on our uh, uh, social media, says this is a scene brought back the memory of watching this with friends. I believe we had to rewatch it because it was just too ridiculous. <laughs> it's something else. It's yeah, something it's... else. The climax of society. Yes. Grant Paris says, I saw the picture of the butthead and I was like, I'm watching that movie. <laughs> wow. There was a lot of movie to get through. Yep. A lot of movie then, in that movie. A lot of movie yes. And then like. Why? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, that's it. If that's you listen it. to our episode, it's a lot of but why. Yeah, you mm-hmm. watched it. Yeah. Good job. But why? <laughs> that's a very existential question mm-hmm. right there from uh, Grant Parrish. It really is. Beer Bloody Body Slam says, I love showing this movie to people and watching their reactions. You, we, we all have a movie like that that we like to just shock people with. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Pat Hetfield says, since it was mentioned that there should be a drive-in double feature of society and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, let me just throw in my two cents and say, I think it would be interesting if a movie was made that was some kind of bizarre combination of both of those films. Wrap your collective heads around that, you internet superstars, you. A crossover movie. So they shrink themselves before they jump into the shunted's body? Yeah. There you go. A crossover that, like the fly crossover where you put both movies space. in the pods and then... Yeah. The one that comes out. Of- or, well, you, the, the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids family moves to a new neighborhood and they have to, like, participate in the shunting and they shrink themselves to get away from it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this. No. <laughs> well, Pat says, uh, I'll end by saying thanks, even if I don't comment. I always listen. When it seems there's nothing else, I always have the freak show to look forward to, and that's something I'm thankful Aww. for. Oh, thanks. We're, We're thankful, thankful for you. you. My meh at the beginning was sarcastic. I do care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, despite what we say, yeah. we're just like, uh, I've yeah. said fuck him a couple times here. I mean, we love you. We actually you. Yeah. really we love, love you. you. Like, <laughs> we appreciate it. In all seriousness. Thanks. Yeah. And a couple weeks ago, we watched Habit. Uh, that was the movie. Uh, David Dawson writes in and says, Habit rocks 4.5 out of 5. <laughs> yeah, right. it was solid. All right, there you go. Well, Do you, you liked Habit? No. Nope. Habit. Nope. Yeah, I was like, oh, what? I was, I was like, wait, like, did I have a stroke? What is happening? No, I hated Habit. Yeah. I was, like, I was thinking of. Um, I liked Habit. What did we watch I before that? As well. High tension. That's what I was oh, thinking. Okay. okay. I liked high tension. Or did we watch that habit after sucked. habit? I can't even remember. I don't know. No, it's high tension. High tension was high tension was first. It was my oh, habit was your pick. Habit, then habit sucked. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah, I was like, like, but you're what? entitled to your opinion, sir. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, and you too, David. Team habit. Okay, so thank you again, <laughs> hey, all of you. He brought for- Bloodbeat <laughs> via me. So, oh, oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just, he may come in and say some nice stuff. I'm just going to remind you all. <laughs> You're just been, trying to take the heat off yourself been, for Bloodbeat. You're definitely. still responsible for that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Continue on, Kyle. Uh, well, thank you all very much for writing in. We appreciate it. Uh, so, and don't forget to go over and uh, and submit a suggestion. But now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, starting with Sean. Okay. <laughs> um, Terror Train. Uh, I'm I'm going to keep it short. I'm gonna I'm gonna recommend this movie. Almost based on the fact that David Copperfield is such a star. In That's this movie. fair. Yeah. I think that is. It's his only movie. It's and Pret a Porte, but uh, well, he was not really credited. That's fine. <laughs> He's he is definitely in this movie. He, and did credited. he play himself? That's the I thing. Really, this is the only thing that he did not play himself. Oh, okay. that's the that's the catch because he has Robert been. Altman. He's been in other things, but playing David Copperfield. Mm, okay, so, yeah. 
So, I mean, the movie, I feel like this movie is, it's a little lacking. Like, it yeah. it could be a little gorier, it could be a little faster. I mean, Jamie Lee Curtis, like I said, isn't doing much. This is Ben Johnson's movie. Um, costumes, the inciting incident isn't really, it's not crazy. Like, you know, they had to explain later that he was already sick, that this put him there. It wasn't just sexy netting that made him go nuts and kill people. Um, but I the fact that David Copperfield's in this in such a starring role, the fact that he looks the way he does. Mm -hmm. and like, that he, I don't, and that he looks at you the way he does. I mean, I mean, you kind of like... <laughs> Holly, I think you're the only person like enchanted by David I think Copperfield. So. I don't care. I mean, I'm yeah. enchanted in the way I just like... As a spectacle. Yeah. Yeah, it, he is a spectacle in this movie and it's very interesting to watch and uh, yeah, like I liked more his, more his parts and Jamie Lee Curtis's parts. Um, that's why you gotta watch the movie. David Copperfield. Like, it is one, it's Terror Train, it's part of the Jamie Lee Curtis Scream Queen collection, as we're coining here, mm -hmm. <laughs> so it feels like you have to check it off the box at some point, but while you're doing that, enjoy the David Copperfield, because it is, uh, it's rather delightful, it's I will see. magical. Magic on a train, <laughs> who knew? So yeah, I'm going to say yes, you should watch Terror Train, because it's got a few things in there you definitely have to see, so there you go. Um, Kayla, what do you think of Terror Train? Uh, yeah, I think spectacle is a good word, like... I feel like this movie, if it were made now, would not have the cool things like David Copperfield or the costume party. It would be very bland in its approach. Mm -hmm. So, like, at least in the 70s and 80s, they were like, uh, yeah, costume party on a sweet train. There's a band called Crime and David Copperfield. <laughs> it's like, and, like, they're trying on all these things and, like, they might not all fit, but I'm entertained by them trying it on go to you know party. yeah exactly <laughs> like this looks like a fun train ride i'd hang out here you yeah know? i would hang out on this train yeah. yeah and uh like that's not something i've seen in many movies you know usually a train is not a party train it's yeah. a commuter train and yeah, that's boring boxes on train. snow piercer yeah even even worse yeah, yeah. that's very true <laughs> yeah. Yeah. um it's always, always bleak and serious you know and this is a fun party train yeah uh yeah this like the time capsules spectacle of it like you should watch it i think like Obviously, a slasher I'm always going to be interested in. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis is disappointing. She's not in it more and mm -hmm. isn't more like, like I said, it feels like she's coasting. Yeah. And that's disappointing. But everything else kind of makes up for it. So I definitely think you should watch it. Uh, yeah, it's like, and how many New Year's Eve movies do you have? You know, yeah. so do this in New Year's Evil and then connect all the dots because they have a lot in common. So mm -hmm. definitely check it out. I would recommend it. Colin. What'd yeah, think? I think that would be a good double feature. Yeah, it would. New Year's <laughs> Evil and Terror Train. Which one would go first? I would do Terror New Year's Train Evil because of the time yeah, train, time the time zones. Yeah, I know. That's why yeah. I do that one last. <laughs> yeah. That one as you get close to, to New Year's. Yeah. Right. Do that one. Yeah, um, yeah I, I was sitting there going like, okay, so how would I grade this movie? Because, I mean, ultimately I like it. Um, but it is, I think, of the five Jamie Lee Curtis uh, horror movies, it's probably the least interesting mm -hmm. it's of them. It's weaker, yeah. And I think it's because her her role in it is kind of diminished. Um, I mean, she has star power, but it doesn't come through as much as it does in the other films that she's in. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I'm underwhelmed by the gore effects. Yeah, in it. You definitely. know, it's like that's, you know, something that I think gives that, that's a, a, a seasoning that you have to give to this era slasher movie i like and seasoning that's yeah. a good yeah, word it's for a that seasoning yeah. for it. well you also have to have boobs we did get tna a little bit in the movie. like that's a boobs. prerequisite of the you know, the costume yeah, that led to that though was so confusing <laughs> the costume okay. yeah. came out of. Uh, we, if anyone knows what she was supposed to be she was just wearing pants up to her boobs with she, a hand in it yeah and, and, a like and suspenders I is it is it, it a play like on old fashioned clown? Like is the, it a play on words? Like is Benny it a clown Hill thing? or something? That's what I don't it feels know like a red that. skeleton yeah. or something. If like anyone that. knows what she's supposed to be, please tell us. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be thinking about it for a while trying yeah. to figure it out. Am I going to be Googling? Go on Reddit and see if I can find it. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to dress for it next year and they're going to be like, what are you going to be like? <laughs> I'm I'm the go girl watch Terror Train. You tell me. You tell me. I'm the girl from Terror Train. But I guess what it does have going for it, it's got, I mean, yeah, the the interest of it is like it's this weird movie on a train with a magician. <laughs> that's, <laughs> you know, that's it. Like, that's, there you go. Describe that to people. Like it's a horror movie on a train and there's a lot of magician in it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, it's more like a it is more on the mystery side than slasher. Yeah. You know, but I think it's still um, you know, just the setting is is unusual. I don't know. I I liked the movie. So I guess, you know, the combination of Jamie Lee Curtis uh, you know, uh, the the fact that the slasher changes his mask 
every couple of, you know, and then that it's a New Year's Eve movie uh, kind of makes it like you should run this every holiday uh, or every New Year uh, terror train. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to say um, it's a mild, you know, you should watch it, but mm-hmm. I think you should watch it. Mm-hmm. Holly, what do you think? Yeah, no, I, I think we're all on the same page. It's just one of those that like it checks the box. You know, I watch Terror Train. It's, it uh, checks more boxes than you think it'll check. But that's yeah. that's the thing. Like, you know, I I, I got to watch it because I got to watch Jamie Lee's, you know, early Scream Queen features. Um, but it does some unexpected things. This is definitely an, a, a train that I have not seen before. Um, mm-hmm. and Wait until I bring Night Train to Terror and you will lose your mind. Will I? Oh, yeah. I'm going to hold you to that. I, I, I Train like, month here on the Saturday Night Freak Show. I like can we when have you themed pay- months? Yeah. We can. We can if you want. Yeah. yeah. Don't, get, don't, don't, don't give me the power. We would just have to, we would have to check with each other, make sure we're all not picking the same Yeah, movie. that's very true. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this does some ex- unexpected things. I, I think, I'm not actually enchanted by David Copperfield. <laughs> But I okay, do. you can't walk that back no, now. Yeah, I'm I sorry. Don't, no one, I don't know, no I don't know if I believe you. you. Yeah. <laughs> no one believes you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not actually enchanted by him. However, I love everything about him being in this. I think it's hilarious. The gaze, the constant intensity, it's just hilarious and perfect. I need silence perfect. to my illusions. It, it's, so, it's so great. It's such a great... It's such a great piece to this movie. Um, it kind of, in my opinion, it, it kind of made it watchable because this is a very slow movie. There's not much gore. The, the, there's there are no kill scenes really. Like there are technically, but it, there's really not. There's there's nothing really happening there. Um, there's some suspense, some tension, but it's a very slow burn of a movie. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna recommend it um, because there's enough there that it's still enjoyable. It definitely is is one that I think you should check that box. Um, yeah, we've seen it is very similar to prom night. It does have similarities to other things we've seen, but I I, I think it's I think it's still something you need to experience because uh, of David Copperfield. Obviously, I mean, that's obviously that is. Let's All just right, be real. So that means unanimous <laughs> consent. <laughs> Terror Train is. Uh, I think it's unanimous consent on David Copperfield. <laughs> yes, and it is. Terror Train is the effect. <laughs> yes, so, it is. There you go. Freak Show approved means you have yep. to watch it. Somebody that's, stamp uh, it. That's the yep. rule. Okay. All right. Next week, we're going to find out how uh, Michaela is going to injure Sean <laughs> as revenge for society. Well, I would say society promised. was the last straw, is what uh, I would say, because it was Howard the Duck and nothing but trouble were pushing you to that point. Yeah. I don't know. There's two other people in this group. Okay. All right. <laughs> so what, are you? what you're saying is I just have to space them out farther. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did these three in a year, Sean. In less than a oh, year. Not, I didn't know it was supposed to be spaced out that far. I, I'm just saying, what about this year has made you so chaotic that you're like saying, inflicting as much pain as possible? 2021 a, was punishment enough. Yeah. And you brought those three movies. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying. Uh, I take and I give. What can I say? It was the, it was in the psychosphere. <laughs> it, it tasted of aluminum and something, and that's a true detective callback. Okay. <laughs> Since we do time as a flat circle all the time. So right. we say, Are we yeah, still we do recording? Say, oh, are you trying to bring the aluminum one into it now? Okay, yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. Should, we should add that in. Michaela, all what right. are aluminum we watching? Ash. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's where we are. Michaela, what are we watching next week? <laughs> it is the holiday season. So we're watching the Star Wars holiday special. Oh. No! Oh, oh my God! Oh, no. What? <laughs> I have seen the Star Wars holiday. Special. I watch it every year, Colin. I I'm immune to this movie. Oh Star man, Wars yeah, she special. got you then. I am immune yeah. to this movie. I have That's not right. seen it. I have oh, seen a piece or two, but I have not seen. Your suffering. I know there's legendary. a lot of Wookies. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> That's only one part of the movie. It is an hour and forty minutes, Sean. What's his wife's name? Mala. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. That alone scares me. All right, yeah. next week. All right, next week we're going to review the Star Wars holiday special <laughs> from 1978. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Awesome. <laughs> That's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>